Good evening, Hackology, and um, welcome to another episode. In tonight's episode, um, I thought we'd go over Blowfish encryption again. I mean, I know I've covered uh, installing the plugin for HexChat, but I thought we'd talk about it in a little bit more detail. And uh, as hopefully over the next couple of weeks, we're going to move on to looking at some uh, encryption algorithms, the benefits, symmetric keys, asymmetric keys, public keys, and uh, all of that good stuff. So, um, Blowfish. We looked at installing it for HexChat. I've also shown you the different commands, but we've never talked much about the security or how it works or the reasons behind its creation. So for the first video in, uh, in this series, I thought we'd look at Blowfish. Now, uh, Blowfish uh, was designed, is a, Blowfish uses a symmetric key block cipher. So basically, um, it uses the same key for all people to decode and encode the messages and it uses something called a block cipher which breaks down each part of the message into separate blocks and encodes them individually. So the uh, Blowfish cipher was designed in 1993 by Bruce Schneier um, and it, so far there has been no effective crypto analysis against it. Um, there are some weaknesses, so I, sh I shall explain those a little bit later. But um, it was designed to be an alternative to DES. Um, <laughs> DES is a completely failed algorithm now. You shouldn't use it. It's very, very insecure, susceptible to uh, different types of attack. So um, when, Bill, uh, when Bruce Schneier um, released Blowfish, uh, at the time there were no uh, free and open source encryption algorithms uh, written to the standard of what Blowfish was. So Bruce Schneier basically wrote this algorithm and released it to the public and uh, his quote was when he released it Blowfish is unpatented and will remain so in all countries. The algorithm is hereby placed in the public domain and can be used freely by anyone. So basically what Bruce wanted to do was give an algorithm that was pretty secure, uh, an alternative to DES and um, give it to the public domain uh, and allow anybody to use this uh, encryption algorithm to protect their data in transit. Um, you can also use it to encrypt files and you can also use it to in encrypt hard disks and things, uh, but it's advised that you don't encrypt anything over four gigabytes. So uh, what is Blowfish? Blowfish is, uh, uses a 64-bit block size, uh, which is basically the amount of data that gets encrypted in each um, each time the Blowfish algorithm is run, um, and it, it supports a variable key length of 32 to 448 bits. I'll explain why it's uh, important to choose a good key in a little while. So uh, it's a 16 round Festial cipher. It uses a large uh, it uses large key dependent S boxes. S boxes are called substitution boxes, and what they do is they basically um, S boxes obscure the uh, relationship between the key and the ciphertext. If you want to read more about that you can uh, Google for Shannon's property of confusion and you can also check the wiki page on S-boxes. So weaknesses uh, known to Blowfish. Blowfish is known to be susceptible to attacks on reflect reflectively weak keys. So um, basically when you um, perform a key exchange which should be done in a sensible manner um, preferably offline, but there are other encrypted mediums that you can talk over or you can uh, pass information over and exchange keys with other people. So carefully select your keys, ensure that they're not just ASCII characters, ensure that you use symbols, ensure that you use uh, things that uh, wouldn't be in standard dictionaries or things that wouldn't be in uh, things like rainbow tables, pre-computed hashes and things like that. So uh, Blowfish is quite an old algorithm now as it was uh, released in 1993. Its successors are AES and Salsa20. Uh, these, it, you may have heard of AES. AES is used on basically every Wi-Fi network in the world. Um, Salsa20, you might not have heard much about that. I think that's, um, I'm not sure so don't quote me on it. I think Salsa came out after AES. Um, but Blowfish has some modern successors as well written by, Bill, um, written by Bruce Schneier. Um, and they are two fish and they are three fish, uh, both um, more secure than blowfish. Um, so I thought we'd also talk about fishlim. 
Now, Fishlims, the plugin that uh, we've covered on Hackology before, I'm going to link it in the uh, video notes down there. And basically, uh, Blowfish uses uh, ECB mode, which is one of the simplest forms, simplest modes of encryption. The message is divided into blocks, and each block is encrypted separately. There are better modes of encryption, which include CBC and CRT. And these modes are better because they result in more pseudo-randomness. Um, so, notes for security for FishSlim is never give untrusted sources your uh, encrypted, uh, sorry, your unencrypted chat logs, because if they also have the encrypted version, they can then decrypt messages that appear again. And also, make sure you choose a, a key of decent size. Now, I suggest that uh, if you're using IRC and you wish to talk um, relatively privately, but um, you know, obviously Blowfish is a very old algorithm and we don't know what uh, kind of um, attacks uh, agencies have been funding and what kind of computing power they have. I mean, most encryption is usually a trade-off where the computing power required to decipher the text is that great that it makes no sense to attack the, um, the actual cipher and um, also with different types of cipher like PGP um, agencies have been known to rather than attack the cipher or attack the um, a a attack the transit of the data or try and uh, get the information from there. What they will do is they will try and get a Trojan on your machine or they will try and get a keystroke logger to number one, um, the Trojan to steal the private key and number two, to steal the um, the keychain. The keychain is the um, password that you use to unlock your um, PGP key. So. Um, Bluefish, although it's outdated, it's still quite popular. Um, it comes default with Hexchat on Windows. It also comes default with Hexchat and Xchat on Linux. Uh, it's very easy to set up. It's very easy to use. Like I said, we've done a video on it before. I'll include it in the notes. Um, I hope you found tonight's video rather uh, interesting. Uh, maybe you've been able to take some useful bits from it. And uh, I hope you like the artwork as well. We've got Aaron Schwartz, Jacob Applebaum, and uh, the godfather Richard Stallman. I think uh, maybe in some future episodes we'll run a, a little competition I might give you guys the chance to win some of my artwork. So uh, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and as always have fun hacking. Peace.